Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 132 on the idea of optical path length. By the end of this video, you should be able to know what an optical path length is and be able to calculate the optical path length in a variety of situations, both using graphical counting methods and situations with different materials. To understand what optical path length is, we have to go back to what may seem to be a very fundamental question, which is, when I say that something is 10 meters long, what do I actually mean? So here we have a figure of a Tarbosaurus, which is about 10 meters long. What do we mean by that? Well, we mean that a Tarbosaurus is as long as 10 meter sticks end to end. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, this is a convention. We conventionally use sticks one meter long to measure things. But that's not the only thing we could use. We could use sticks one inch long, or a foot long, or we could say how many people long. Or we could measure how long this Tarbosaurus is in wavelengths of a particular color of light. So, for example, let's say I had a radio wave with a wavelength of two meters. Then, the Tarbosaurus would be five wavelengths long. One, two, three, four, five on this little picture. Or, to work it out mathematically, we know that the Tarbosaurus is 10 meters long. We know that one wavelength is two meters, which means it's five wavelengths of two meter light. But there's no reason I have to use a two meter radio wave. I could use a 600 nanometer light wave of the typical red laser pointer. How many wavelengths long is a Tarbosaurus in this unit? Well, 10 meters, and we know that one wavelength is 680 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which gives us 1.471 times 10 to the 7th wavelengths of 680 nanometer light. This is the fundamental principle of optical path length. You're measuring distances using wavelengths of light instead of meter sticks. Notice the formula for optical path length, for which I will use this scripty L, is the distance traveled x divided by the wavelength. So what are the units of optical path length? Well, optical path length is a distance, that traveled by the light, divided by another distance, the wavelength. L is x over lambda. Since both x and lambda are distances and measured in meters, optical path length will be unitless. Which should make sense. Optical path length is the number of wavelengths traveled by the light. So I'm just counting wavelengths like we did in the previous slide. And things that are counted should be unitless. When I say that I have five apples, that's just five. There's no meat unit on it. So there is one quirk with using wavelengths to cap as a measure of distance. And that comes in with materials. As you know from Unit 2 on geometric optics, the wavelength of light changes when it enters a material. The speed of light goes from the speed c, 3 times 10 to the 8, down to v, whatever the v is in the material, where the index of refraction is this c over v. When I combine this definition of n with the fundamental relationship for waves v equals lambda f, and recognizing that the frequency can't change, then that tells me that the wavelength must change to the wavelength in the material lambda must be lambda naught, which is the wavelength in vacuum, divided by the index of refraction. The key point for optical path length is that you should always use the wavelength of the material that the light is currently in. So here's an example with some materials. Imagine that we have a source which emits light of 500 nanometer wavelength. The source is 3 millimeters from a glass slab with an index of refraction n equals 2. Buried within the slab, another three millimeters inside, is a detector. What is the optical path length between the source and the detector? Well, in this situation, I have two different regions, each with a different lambda, outside the glass and inside the glass. So I have to do this problem in two parts. So first, let's do the part outside the glass. The optical path length before the glass is the distance over the wavelength, we know the distance is 3 millimeters, and we know the wavelength is 500 nanometers, which, when you divide that out, gives us an optical path length before the glass of 6,000. Now let's do the second part inside the glass. Well, 
the optical path length inside the glass is the distance the light travels divided by the wavelength of the light in the glass. So to get the wavelength in the glass, we take the wavelength of light in vacuum, 500 nanometers, and divide it by two to get 250 nanometers. Now we can proceed to calculate the optical path length. Three millimeters, three times 10 to the minus three meters, divided by the wavelength of light in the glass, 250 times 10 to the minus nine meters, gives us an optical path length in the glass of 12,000. To get the total optical path length, we then just add these two values. So the total optical path length is 6,000 plus 12,000, which is 18,000. So in summary, optical path length is essentially measuring by counting how many wavelengths something is long instead of how many meter sticks, which we will represent mathematically as a script DL for the optical path length, which is going to be equal to the distance traveled x divided by the wavelength lambda. Since different kinds of light have different wavelengths, the optical path length, even for the same distance, can vary depending upon the wavelength of light being used. Think back to our example with the dinosaur. It was five radio waves, or 1.47 times 10 to the seventh, 680 millim nanometer light. It's also worth remembering that the optical path length is a unitless quantity. And finally, you need to remember that you need to use the wavelength that is true where you happen to be. So you need to take into account any indices of refraction. This is essentially returning to the very fundamental Physics 131 idea of object egoism. This concludes this video.